10 random MTG cards rated day number 18 we're apparently on. Happy Thursday to you, everybody. Let's look at the first card of the day. It's Goblin Ringleader. Good magic card. Really good magic card. Four mana, three and a red for a 2-2 Goblin with haste. And when it comes into play, reveal the top four cards of your library. Put all Gobbos revealed this way into your hand, the rest on the bottom. So what does one give a card like Goblin Ringleader? <laughs> Actually... Really, really good, but especially in, obviously, like just Goblin Commander decks nowadays. I'm not sure that this sees too much play in Goblin decks in like competitive environments because I'm not sure those decks really exist, but they did at one point, and when they did, this card was really good. So I'm going to give this card a standing 6.9 because, you know, I reserved that score for extremely nice cards that just aren't quite the real thing. You know what I'm saying? So let's move on. To Mark of Eviction here, a single blue mana for an aura, then a chance a creature. At the beginning of your upkeep, return enchanted creature and all at auras attached to that creature to their owner's hands. So, kind of a delayed unsummon effect that is on an aura, so it gives you bonuses for playing, you know, an enchantment. Which I think is kind of cool. Um, also returns the mark to your hand, as a, as a matter of course, uh, through its own abilities. And that could be neat for, you know, again, repeating those an enchantment enter the battlefield triggers or you cast an enchantment triggers. So a card like this is actually really cool. It's ever only be ever been printed in Ravnica City of Guilds. And I remember people trying to do tricky stuff back when it was in standard and never really getting there with it. But again, there might be the odd commander deck that could make really, really good use of this. So I think it's kind of OK. It could even save your own dudes if that's what you wanted to do. But most of the time, I think you're just putting it on opponents, guys. And again, delayed on summon is kind of fine. So I don't hate this card and I'm going to give it a five. No, I'm not. I'm going to give it a 4.6 because <laughs> it does not deserve to be average. It's not actually very good, but in the decks where it hits, it, it hits, baby. But we'll move on to Notion Rain. You guys remember when this was going to be the next big thing? Three mana, one, a black, and a blue for a sorcery. Surveil two, then draw two. Notion Rain deals two to you. So this is kind of just read the bones where you get to surveil. And that's okay. But I feel like when this came out, people were like, dude, this card is really good. And like, I don't think I'm innocent. <laughs> I, really I think when I first read this card, I was like, okay, there's a, you're telling me there's a chance. But like, not really. <laughs> I don't think read the bones can be good in standard right now. But I guess people still occasionally play effects like this in Commander, but even then, real role player and kind of a lower tier role player at that. So I can't really score this like super high. I'm just going to give it a 5.1. I think that's where we are on Read the Bones effects nowadays. A little better than average, but again, low tier better than average. So I'll move on to Tree of Tales. This is an artifact lands that taps to add green. But it does, doesn't have a basic land type. That's the sort of, I guess, drawback, if you want to call it that. But it does have the artifact card type, which is um, silly, as we've seen a number of times. The cheapest version of this card is actually from the original Mirrodin. You don't see that every day. And it's $1.13 to get, so still over a buck for this card. And that's because even though it looks like it's nothing special, these artifact lands are actually very good. A basic gets a 5. We always say a basic land gets a 5. So this gets a 5.1. <laughs> Let's move on to Burrowing. Card from my childhood. A single red mana for a creature to gain. Mountain Walk. This is, of course, an aura. So this is bad. <laughs> Card's so bad. I used to, I remember you, like, I liked the art back in the day, mostly because of the open plane and blue sky in the background, not the, like, rabid whack-a-mole unicorn thing. Have I ever even, when I picture this card in my head, I don't remember him being, like, a unicorn mole or something. <laughs> I don't remember that, but anyway, Mark Poole's always cooking something up. Whoa. Mark Poole's always cooking something up. This card's bad. Um, 1.1. Card's terrible. So let's move on here easy assessment to Sunforger. three mana for an equipment that uh equips for three mana equip creature gets plus four plus zero you can pay a red and a white and unattached sun forger to search your library for a red or white instant card with converted mana cost four or less and cast that card without paying its mana cost then shuffle your library well you can get this card for a dollar from like three different sets um, but it is also, you know, four and six dollars from a couple of sets. It's a card that's still played. And obviously if you're in red, white, like equipment and commander, I think it's a card that you do have to play, especially considering you don't mind so much the plus four plus zero, cause you're going to either get trample or first strike or even both on some of your equipments or your equipment setups. So the fact that it doesn't bestow toughness bonuses is kind of okay. 
The fact that this does cost six total mana to get on the table and equip is a bit of an issue, but again, in equipment commander decks, there are multiple ways to circumvent that, so you're not too worried about, especially the equip cost on it. Um, altogether, though, this can help you go and tutor for very important cards in your red-white commander deck again, so tutoring is always welcome. It's got basically the right sort of casting cost for what it's actually doing for you, so again, super narrow application. We see that a lot with these sort of casual commander specials, and even though this is really confined to the world of Boros Equipments and Commander, which is not the most popular deck in the world, um, this is sort of one of the cards that makes them tick the most and is a must-play for them, so... I'm going to give this card a 5.9. As much as I want to give it a 6 something, I think 5.9 is closer in terms of its real applications because there aren't really that many of them. So let's move on here to Demon's Grasp. 5 mana, 4 and a black for a sorcery. A creature gets minus 5, minus 5 till end of turn. Really bad at sorcery speed. Only ever really choosable in sealed. I would say that's the only place where you play this card. I don't even know how many copies you play in draft. Probably zero, honestly, but I don't know. Depends on if there are really important five toughness creatures in the format. I'm talking about it way too long. The card's terrible, uh, but it is removal, so 1.5, I guess I'll say. We'll move on. Ooh, Destiny Spinner's up next. Two mana, one and a green for a 2-3 enchantment creature. This is also a human. Creature and enchantment spells you control cannot be countered. You can also pay three and a green and have target land you control become a XX elemental creature with trample and haste till end of turn, where X is the number of enchantments that you control. It is still a land, so fantastic card. <laughs> This is a body that is also an enchantment for the Enchantress decks. I keep saying, like, okay, in an enchantment deck, you might want this. Maybe you want this. But you always want this in enchantments every single time. You have plenty of creatures you don't want countered. You have plenty of enchantments you don't want countered. And this is an enchantment, so it triggers all your, like, draw a card when an enchantment comes into play. Just absolutely disgusting magic card that is more or less a must-play in Enchantress decks. And those are much more popular than, say... Boros Equipment, just to use a random example for no reason. So, aside from that, the activated ability is usable on occasion. So, at least there's that. <laughs> so, I'm surprised this card isn't worth slightly more, but it's only ever been printed at Uncommon. So, you know, it never really went out of control, and it shouldn't, right? So, I'm going to give Destiny Spinner, like, a 6.61, I guess we'll say, um, which is probably too high considering how narrow the applications are. But again, there's more than one enchantments deck in Commander. There's at least three. <laughs> so I would say this does see a lot of play. And, you know, Enchantress is actually, especially when it comes to a couple of the different enchantment commanders, are some of the most popular decks to build in Commander. So yeah, Destiny Spinner sees play left and right. Very, very popular card. Let's give it a decent score. Next is Tatiova Benthic Druid. Cool art on the Commander Masters. And a special here. Five mana, three, a green, and a blue for a three, three legendary Merfolk Druid with landfall. Whenever a land enters the battlefield under your control, you gain a life and you draw a card. Pretty celebrated Commander, especially given the fact that it hasn't actually had that much time to be a Commander. Originally printed in um, Dominaria. Yeah, and originally printed in Dominaria. So... Only been around for a few years at this point, but I see a lot of people messing around with this. I see a lot of EDH rec sort of builds with this. I think it's a fairly popular commander, and I do have at least one real-life friend who has built this deck and enjoys it. So, you know, I see, like, chatter about it from time to time. Cool card for the 99 of Landfall decks, obviously, but a great card as a commander, too. If you built your entire deck around it, it's pretty sick, so... I've seen people go off with this card personally, and I know there's a lot of love for it on the internet for good reason. Five mana is a lot for a commander. Let's not be, let's not praise her too much. You know, there are problems with the card, but, you know, once you get the setups in, in place, she's unbelievable. So again, whether actually your commander or just in the 99, great magic card for almost anything Simic, honestly. The trick Simic has access to, you know, if you're playing Cultivate in your deck, this is probably fine. <laughs> so I'm going to give Tatiova a, a six point. For Nintendo 64. I really think she's worth it, guys. But that is the last card of the day. Hope the rest of your Thursday is fantastic and productive. Or if you don't want it to be productive, I hope it's not. I hope you get to just sit there and kind of recharge and woo, swaba, and zen out and all that. Because sometimes people need that. You know? Just hang out. Have a good day is all I'm saying. I love you very much, and I'll see you tomorrow. Bye, guys.